I wanted to show people what a real foreclosures crisis looks like, right? For those of us who were investing in 2008, like I was, I, I owned 40 rental properties in 2006 and both my mom and my dad are on this call right now, which is awesome. They can tell you that, you know, I know what it's like to buy 40 rental properties and then have a real foreclosure crisis happen. And then seeing the values of those properties go down on paper. And of course, why I still own them today and why it turned out to be great investments. But this is what a real foreclosures crisis looks like. This information is coming from January to June. So we're taking this year of 2023 and we're looking back January to June of other years. So 2008, we had 1.3 million foreclosures in the first half. In 2010, we had 1.6 million foreclosures in 2010. Pablo, can you read that number for me of 2023? What's the number of foreclosures that we have for all of our friends uh, on the podcast? 185,580. Was that thousands or was that millions? <laughs> thousands, yeah. Thousands, it, right? If you take the million out, it, it's about half of the thousands, right? <laughs> you, you can cut this a million different ways. You're, you're not going to get to 1.3 or 1.6 million anytime soon, yeah, yeah. right? You know, so this is data with perspective, right? This is why inside my walls at JWB, we have not talked at all about foreclosures because it doesn't matter. When you have the perspective here and you understand what this 15% increase really means in the greater perspective of what a real foreclosure crisis looks like, you wouldn't even write that article, right? Or you may be... Maybe maybe you would because you need to get clicks and need to make money, but you at least would would not uh, contribute to fear mongering, which a lot of articles today do. Yeah, that looks that makes a lot of sense, man. And you know, the, the, back to what you were saying too of this idea of number one, when we have the perspective of the historical, when it looked like a foreclosure crisis and something was really happening, the numbers were. I don't even know. Is that a hundred, a hundred X more, more, you know, like somewhere between a hundred and 200 X what mm -hmm. it is today, but even, even the, if even the 15% increase, right? Like even, even the return of where we're at by 2020, we're still way below 2019 and mm -hmm. 2018 and 2017 and 2016 and 2014 and 20, you know, like 2014 was the day that I, the year that I feel like every single person that listens to the show if if you ask them, would you like a time machine and a hundred thousand bucks to go back to 2014 and put it on Jacksonville properties? They'd be like, oh uh, yes, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And those even those numbers then were three more than three x what the foreclosure number is right now in 2023, right? So like again, data with perspective, and then you go to 2021 where you said it was artificially low. And then now it's back to these like 2020 numbers, right? So like, it does feel like when you put this perspective in it, it, it feels like a pretty insignificant macroeconomic number. That's what it is. Nobody in 2014 said, oh, you know what? I really want to invest in real estate, but I'm really worried about the number of foreclosures that have happened in the first six months of 2014. I can guarantee you that. So... Well, I mean, I'm sure somebody said that and then didn't invest in real estate and therefore wishes they invest in real estate. You're talking about the people that actually invest in real estate and are super happy with that investment, right? There you go. That's what I mean. <laughs>